Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome. This is your class you, number Jeff. 24. Okay. Yeah, penultim, right? So we are saying the last but one, right? Mm -hmm. Good evening. Hi, good evening, welcome. Okay, I hope everybody is ready now. Welcome. As I said, this is your class number 24. Yeah, 24. And today is Thursday. What day is it today? Today is Thursday, it's June, the, June the 15th, right? June the 15th. Yeah. We're about celebrating the Father's Day. Yeah, Father's Day. Are you prepared? Are you ready for having your celebration, guys? Well, I hope everybody's ready to celebrate. Yeah. Okay, well, look. Um, today, we are going to continue with the same topic we were studying, right? We are still in loyalty is the unit four and branding awareness is like the um, the way the way to get the loyalty of people right the way uh we are going to um, make people believe what we do what we are what we offer Okay, uh, why do we exist in the market? So it's about branding awareness. Obviously, this is uh, based on the promotion strategies, right? Remember that we are still mm, um, showing or following the marketing plan, right? This is about the marketing plan. So still, still, right? Okay, is everybody, if, I'm sorry, is it everybody ready to start? Yes, teacher. <laughs> yes, teacher, we are ready. Okay, well, I will say a letter, okay, and you will say a word that starts with that letter initial. This word, are from the vocabulary we have been learning, okay? Uh, yesterday we started the brand awareness um, stage. So it's related to uh, this vocabulary, okay? Bien, entonces, yo voy a decir una letra y ustedes me dicen una palabra de acuerdo a lo que vimos ayer de las... Um, eh, fases, digamos, de el reconocimiento de la marca, ¿verdad? Entonces, vamos a ver entonces. Comenzamos, ¿sí? You ready? Guys, are you ready? First letter. Okay, there you go. First letter. Letter R. Uh, recognition. Very good. Recognition. So you have a point, Boris. Now, uh, yeah. very good. Now, B initial. B. Hmm? 
B, letter B, initial. One word, one word with letter B initial. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Funding hours, minutes. Very good, Boris. Two points for Boris. There we go. Great. Now, yeah. yes, you, you are winning. Okay, you're on the head. So let's continue. I will say a letter initial, okay, a letter, and you will say a word with that letter initial, all right? Let's start over with another uh, letter. Next letter, letter T. Letter T. Top of me. Very good, Boris. Yay. Top of mind, top of mind, yes, top of mind. Mm -hmm. Now, you have three points now, Boris, right? Next, next letter. Okay, letter U. Letter U. We are no not brown. Yes, Carlos Ernesto. Woo! Yes, correct. Unknown brand. That is correct. So let's remember the stages. The stages are brand recall, mm -hmm. recognition, top of mind. What's next? What's next? Brand dominates. dominates. Dominance. 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 Brand dominance. Yes. Uh -huh. And the last one? On the brown. Unknown brand. And Remember no that this is a model, all right? This is a model. It's not that every product is going through that. Uh, or you can adapt your product. You can adapt your strategies to according to your product, according to your uh, target market, according to the business where you are in. And also you can adapt your strategies uh, for brand awareness uh, according to the situations, maybe temporary situations, transitions of your business. So you, you can adapt your own model of brand awareness, okay? Because the strategies to make your brand known for the market, uh, will take place where you want, okay? Will take place uh, through the strategies that you need. For example, promotion strategies, a placement strategies, and let's say price strategies, okay? And also the description and the features of your product according to the attributes of your product and where you offer your product and how you send the messages to your customers, right? And what's the value or the price of your product. It's going to work your marketing according to your goals, okay? So, this is what we were studying and in summary, or in sum, uh, we could say that uh, marketing purposes to make a, your business profitable, okay, profitable. It means that you are doing all the actions 
you create the strategies in order to achieve the goals of buying and selling our services or our products, okay? That's marketing. So um, I would like to listen to you guys defining. Así como yo ahorita armé un concepto de marketing. Vamos a ver. Acordémonos desde el principio tenemos los cuatro eh, términos que aprendimos que comienzan con la letter P, ¿verdad? The four P's. Y decíamos que ese es un marketing mix. Entonces, vamos a ver. What is marketing? Marketing. Remember, what is marketing? Lore? Ana Lorena? Hello, teacher. What is marketing uh, for you? Is develop the correct product and define the correct price, uh, offer in the correct place, and uh, make a good promotion for uh, um, give a no the product. We did it, Lorena. Hosman, what is marketing? And for me, marketing is a uh, is the for the uh, uh, well, uh, other company uh, for the uh, sorry, teacher <laughs> idea in my mind. Okay, okay. order order the okay, idea order. by yeah, subject yeah. verb complement. Okay, uh, marketing is the for the the uh, company. Uh, for the expression and characteristic and promotion, the different products and offering at uh, the consumer. Offer to the consumer, all right, yes. Uh -huh. How they present their products, their right price place. in the place, exactly. okay. The products they produce, right? Very good. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are not a factory, right? We, we don't represent a factory, but maybe we represent a trading business, right? We represent or we are in, involved in importing, right? So we may be um, a, involved in different other a, activities um, in order to buy and sell, right? Buy and sell. Okay, that's marketing. Thank you very much, Hosman. Okay, now, decíamos que dentro del marketing tenemos estrategias, strategy, y creamos un marketing plan, okay? What is a marketing plan? What is a marketing plan? Kevin? is when we do a process and we need to follow this process step by step and we put we write uh, the the things that we gonna do excellent yes we did it kevin yay that is correct completely correct um Así que ya ahora ya lo conocen, díganlo con toda confianza lo que han dicho, ¿ok? Yo sé que ahorita los agarré a quemar ropa con términos de antes, ¿verdad? Del mero principio. Sí, Pero solamente era porque ustedes iban a ver que realmente, a pesar de que era el primer, la, el primera, la primera unidad, Todo va inmerso, ¿verdad? Todo va inmerso en lo que estamos. Okay, then, we are in the brand awareness. What is brand awareness? Nelson? What is it? What is brand awareness? Uh, 
I don't know. I can't remember. Okay. Mm. Aware, aware. Something or someone aware of something. And brand mm. awareness. Mm, this uh, describe uh, the level of the recognition that received the brand. Yes. Or yes, product yes, or yes. service. Exactly. Correct. Correct. So, yes, it's like a level <laughs> and a grade. Yeah, a measure, right? The measure and how a measure, the yeah. brand is familiar to your customers, right? Your business, your service is familiar to your customers. For example, uh, who knows a famous lawyer in El Salvador? A famous lawyer. Do you know a lawyer firm? Famous lawyer firm. Alguien que diga así como, uche dice, buen abogado. O bueno, una, una abogada, ¿verdad? También puede ser. A lawyer, a she lawyer or a he lawyer. Ajá. ¿No? Alguien que ustedes digan, bueno, si... Por alguna razón usted necesita alguna situación, recordar el nombre de algún abogado? A lawyer? No. A doctor? A famous doctor? No. Doctor House. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good one. No, yes, I don't right. know. Uh -huh. Ok, let's, um, a ver, pensemos en compañías que tienen nombre de apellidos, digamos, su nombre son apellidos, a ver. López. La, okay. Laboratorio La López. clínica del doctor Zelaya. Ok, good. Mm -hmm. So you see. Uh -huh. Then López that's... Davison. Ok, good. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. John Deere. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Johnny Bravo. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. The cartoon. <laughs> yeah, the cartoon. Uh huh. But if you think about a, it's a name, but under the name, you will find a very solid business, right? A very solid business. But maybe it's a family. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's say uh, family business, ¿ok? Ah, ahí sí. Miren, ahí hay que hacer esta diferencia entre esos dos términos. Tenemos el término familiar y tenemos family. Cuando nos referimos a familiar es como eh, algo familiar de conocido, o sea, de, de que usted está como acostumbrado a eso, pero no se refiere a calificar algo de la familia, ¿ok? Algo de la familia tiene que decir family, ¿ok? Entonces tendría que ser family business, no familiar business. Familiar business es como que yo le diga, usted está familiarizado con los, o ese, ese negocio es conocido, no. Eh, conocido en su forma de hacerse, ¿verdad? If, that, if something is familiar to you, for example, are you familiar with Excel? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But yes. Excel is not your family, right? It's not your family. You just know how to use it, right? Okay. Then uh, if I tell you, is that a family business? Okay. A family business. I then, eso sí ya es un negocio de la familia. Familiar. Exactamente. Okay. Familiar, pero para nosotros familiar tiene ambos sentidos. En inglés, no. En English, it does. All right. So uh, let's move just a little forward because uh, we are still in brand awareness, but eh, vamos a retroceder un poquito más, okay? Just a little while. And we have a reading, okay? We have a reading we kept uh, from unit three in branding. Uh, what makes a brand memorable? How effective is it to copy a business idea? What do you think about one business copying 
another business idea to implement it. What do you think about this kind of business? How effective do you think is that strategy to copy? What do you think? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it effective? It's not good. Uh, it's not effective. Probably. It might be, right? So, what do you think? How effective, I will write this down. is to copy a business idea. Is the, is the page, fan page, is the, Communicate the product in fan uh, in the the fan space. Mm, I, I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm getting it correct. Uh, you are talking about pasting something. Uh, is 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 that uh, show show the 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 product in uh, and in and in page fan. Uh, um show the the products huh when you the, show uh for, for the the sales the, the increase increase sales sailors the increase so, sales my product for you think for example. so you think it is effective to copy those kind of kind of strategies like showing the product uh, like in a the in a fan page Yes. All right. So that will be a good idea according to your. Okay. According to Boris, it is effective. Okay. It is effective. Mm, how effective? Well, if you show your products as they are doing it, okay, then maybe you will, will increase your sales. Am I, am I, did I get it correct, Boris? Did I get your idea correctly? Yes. Oh, okay. So it, then I think that there are ideas that are or that are worthy to copy, right? But maybe our ideas, there are ideas that maybe won't be effective, right? What do you think? Um Elias. What do you think about this question? How effective is it to copy a business idea? Mm -hmm. Teacher, mm -hmm. um, for me, um, the copy the idea and the business it's a different, the different uh, activity. Ah, okay. You can copy something because you have a different activity. Mm, uh, the, uh, the activity is similar ah, because okay. the different is a, is a characteristic and different the competition and result the my product and other in the, for example, size, price, color, this uh, different uh, other, other brand, uh, other company. Okay. So in that case, mm, uh, let's think. Would you copy any attribute that it's working in another product and adding it to yours? Is that what you mean? 
repeat, please? Okay, uh, you, tell, you told me that your product must be different, right? It must yeah. be different from competitors. But what do you think? Would you copy the attributes that maybe are working uh, in the product a, of my competitor and adding that attribute to my a, product? Um, my idea is the, the difference, the different, mm -hmm. the other company, a um, major uh, mejorar, uh -huh. uh, for, ex for example, uh, for example, a uh, restaurant, uh, Mexican food, for example. Uh -huh. my, my restaurant and different other product for the, the quality, the, uh, for example, price, or, or, or other for the product, the, the, my, my place is uh, it, uh, the consumer has the, the good presentation, uh, customer service, and the uh, and the consumer and uh, selection of my co my restaurant because for different other other restaurant for the the tension etc etc okay great now now i get it i think i get it you think that it doesn't matter that the idea is the same of the business but you improve your idea Okay, to be different from the competitor. Is that correct? Okay, great. Yes, that's correct too. That is correct. Uh, so let's read what is like about being the first. Okay, being the first. Is that worthy? Is that correct? Is that, uh, what's the impact of being the first? Being the first, obviously in the market, right? With the idea, with, I don't know, the strategy, right? Being the first. All right, let's read. Let's move to page 32, okay? Page 32 in your manuals. Let's go right there. And here we are. Read the article about the importance of being the first to create a memorable brand. Then answer the questions below. Check answers with a partner. We're going to do it all together here, okay? So let's read. About 40 years ago, marketing strategies all rise and Jack Trout offer the world a way to think about making a brand memorable. The best way to be remembered is to be first into your prospect's mind, representing a clear perception. Think about all the brands that have become synonymous with their function, like Scotch tape, Kleenex, Xerox. It's, not, it's no accident. They were also the first. People love to know what is new. We can help ourselves. Marketers know this too. If a product gets our attention and if it really is new, it gets more than our attention. It gets remembered. It is easier to just copy a business idea, political position or organizational mission from someone else. But if someone else already has gotten into your prospect's mind with the same perception you had hoped to create, uh, you'll find it is hard to push them out. A better plan is to pick a different perception, one that you can be that I'm sorry, one that you can be the first to put into your prospect's mind. Netflix would have never made it. If Reed Hastings' idea had been to open a bunch of stores to compete with Blockbuster. At the time Netflix launched, the perception of Blockbuster was firmly established in the minds of most prospects as the go-to place to rent movies. 
Netflix sidestepped the, that problem by creating a perception of itself as the go-to place to rent movies online. That was new. Okay. First paragraph, uh, Nelson. Second paragraph, Holzman. Uh, third paragraph, Boris. Fourth paragraph, Salvador. Okay, right here. And this last one, please, Edwin. Okay, let's start. Okay. About four years ago, marketing strategy. A, a I no, rise. It's L. Al is the nombre and rise the um, apellido. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, okay. Al rise and Jack mm -hmm. Truth. Um, Truth offered the world a way to think about marking a brand memorable. The best way to be remembered is to be first into your prospect's mind, <clears throat> representing a clear perception. Sorry. <clears throat> Think about all the brands that have become syn synonymous with their fortune. Scott Tape, Kleenex, Xerox, it's no accident. They were also the first. People love to know what is new. We can help ourselves make her know this too. If a product gets our attention and if it really is new, it gets more than our attention, it gets remembered. Remember. It is easier to just copy a business idea, political position, or organization mission from someone else. But if someone else already has gotten in your prospect mind with the same perception you have, you had hope to create, you'll find it it's hard to call them out. A better plan is to pick a different perception, one that you can be the first to put into your prospect mind. Next week would have never made, made it if Red Hastings idea had been to open a, br a branch of a star to compete with Blockbuster. The time not to launch the perception of Blockbuster was firmly established in the mind of most perspects of the cut to place to rent more. Netflix sidestepped that problem by creating a perception of itself as the got to place to rent movie online, that's what's new. All right, very good. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, is there any question so far about the vocabulary in this excerpt? Is the pronunciation or also? Ourselves. Ourselves. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. Ourselves. Yes. Ourselves. Con la rapidez, usted lo va a escuchar que lo mencionan ourselves. Oh, uh, ourselves, right? Pero en su pronunciación así lenta diríamos ourselves. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And this word, how do you pronounce this word? 
powers ng synonymous. Uh -huh. Synonymous? Uh -huh. Well, it sounds like that, but no. Uh, corrijamos esta pronunciación. Esta pronunciación es casi que igual a la de nosotros como si no nemos, ¿verdad? Pero es synonymous. 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 Y hay dos diferentes Synonymous. escrituras. Synonymous. Las dos son correctas. Hay una escritura con I latina, ok, y sin O U, sino creo que solo con la U. Exactamente Synonymous. lo mismo. Synonymous. Okay. Synonymous. Okay, is there any other word that you want to know the pronunciation or the meaning of it? Yes, teacher, pronunciation. Uh, uh, the Netflix side step. Uh, uh, ah, side stepped. Side sorry? stepped. Side step. Yes. Uh -huh. Side stepped. Side stepped. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What is the meaning of this word? Ba is of a store. Ah, okay. Bunch. Bunch is a un cluster, verdad? Como un montón, un pocote, un montón. A bunch of stores, un montón de tiendas. Mm. Nosotros podemos ponerle un montón de palabras. A bunch of words. <laughs> Podríamos decir también como un gran montón, decimos también, ¿verdad? Eh, un montonazo. <ríe> y bueno, y podemos decir otras palabras. But that's bunch. Decimos un gran, man, un gran montón y un gran poco prácticamente suenan igual, ¿verdad? Un gran poco de tiendas, un gran montón de tiendas. It's the same. <laughs> yeah, por ahí. Mm -hmm. no, lo, no lo había pensado hasta ahorita que lo estábamos hablando. Uh -huh. uh, Pronunciación de represent, pres, representing. Sí. Representing. ¿A dónde está? Representing. ¿Dónde está? Yeah, Where is it? Where is it? Yeah. Este, your prospect mean represent, representing a clear perception. Ah, okay, yeah, representing, re, re, representing. Representing. Hmm? representing. Yes, representing. Puede pronunciarlo con la T fuerte, stressed, right? Y puede ser también con la T suave, representing or representing. Pero usualmente es representing. Representing. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Other word is a mark, marketers. That's correct. Just like that. Marketers. Marketers. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Marketers. Los que hacen marketing, ¿verdad? O los mercadólogos. Mercad... Peros no, mercadólogos, ya. Yeah. Okay. Que estudian el mercado. Uh -huh. Okay, then, guys, we are going to complete these um, questions, okay? So let's go to the breakout rooms and re read, okay? Lo leemos nuevamente y vamos a, um, a completar esas preguntas. You guys okay? You got it? Yeah. Okay.
please everybody go to your rooms. Join the rooms so you will listen about the activity. Teacher, a mí me regresa a la principal. No sé si será porque soy del teléfono, me voy a conectar de la compu porque sí intenté dos veces y me saco. Me sacó. Vale, permítame. Ok. ¿Sabe qué? Ana Lorena, la voy a pasar al grupo 3. Ok. Tal vez así entre. No, yo siempre me regreso, mejor me voy a conectar de la compu, tal vez eso es. Oh, ok. Hello, Nelson. Ana Lorena is still trying to connect uh, to the to the breakout room. So please stay just for a while and you may start okay. reading. All right. Uh, okay, she's okay. having problems of connection. Okay. okay. Yes, uh, the teacher sent and and an group, a WhatsApp group. Uh, ah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. There's question uh, who offered the concept, concept of the memorable, memorable brand. brand. Uh, who mm. is Al Rice and Al Rice and Jatro and Jat and Jatro Al Rice and Jatro Al Rice and Jatro. Okay, no, no, yeah. Voy a poner aquí en lápiz. Ok. I'm going to write the answers about the question. Number one is... Oh, okay. Al Rice. Rice and Jack Trow, right? Yes, yes. Uh huh. I was telling you. And and Jack Trow. Jack Trow offered offered the world a way to think about making a brown memorable memorable. <clears throat> Number two. Offered the concept of memorable brand. What are some brands? What are some brands that have become synonymous with their function? Add three more. Some it's scotch, it's scotch tape. Oh, this is brown. This way, brown. 
type Linux. Linux is Xerox. Linux. Ah, Scott Tape, Linux, Xerox. Scott Tape, Linux, and Xerox. And uh, we need to add three brands additional. Mm -hmm. Pero que tienen, que hacen esto de igual. Pregunta. O sea, lo que yo entiendo es que ellos son los que son los primeros como en. Eh, o sea, son potentes que son los, han sido los primeros que como que eso es como explicarte. Eh, son eh, pioneros, digamos. En el, en ajá, el... son pioneros, pero, pero son pioneros como en, en que si te ocupan, eh, bueno, vos pensás en Xerox, ¿qué se te viene a la mente? Eh, como en cosas de horas. Tecnología. Ajá. O sea, eso es lo que hacen ellos. Computador. Son los pioneros en que te trasladan a, a algo. Watch tape. Y un solo. No, no te dejan como divagar, sino que como que te ocupan la mente de un solo en, en un producto. Okay, dice, algo así entiendo. All the brands that have become que tienen maybe pampers. Ajá, Kleenex. Ah, esas son. Ajá. Sí, ah, y guay. Toallitas, yo llamo. Ajá. Eh, no sé cómo se dice, varias. Eh, con olor, se te sí. viene solamente. Exacto. O por ejemplo, scotch, scotch tape, las cintas adhesivas. Las cintas adhesivas. Ajá. Que ah, tienen los pampers también. Eso, ajá. Entonces eso es lo que creo que tienen de similar, o como que son sinónimos entre ellos, que rápido uno se traslada a algo. Maybe iPhone. Yes, yes. o maybe Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. Más. Coca-Cola. Eh, eh. Pepsi, mm, maybe. No. <laughs> For example, Pizza Hut. <laughs> yes. Pizza. Well, uh, what is a better alternative to creating the perception of an already exist existing product? Let's see. Existing. What is a better alternative to creating the perception of an already existing product. Mm, como la como un producto. Well, what is a rare alternative to reading? What is it? Is that is eh ah bueno, no sé si está la respuesta aquí. Ajá, vea, debería. No, no, <laughs> debería. No. Yo iba a poner brand awareness, pero no sé si. Brand awareness. No. Es de business, business idea, political position, organizational mission from the someone else. For example. No, else. Uh, here, but if someone else already has got, gotten into your prospect's mind with the same perception you had hoping to create. Mm -hmm.
Oh, no, I, I, I seen the, the prospect as the go to. Fíjate que estaba viendo que en el segundo párrafo está la respuesta, pero no la logro captar. Yo creo que, bueno, dice, people love to know what is new. Que amamos, aman como que es nuevo. Ajá. Saber que es nuevo. We can help ourselves. Que, que podemos, se puede, no pueden ayudarse a sí mismos. Y los de marketing lo saben. Marketers know this too. If a product gets our attention, si un producto eh, tiene la atención, and if it really is new, it gets more than our attention. It gets, yo creo que la respuesta está en, it is easier to just copy a business idea, uh -huh. political position, or organizational mission from someone else. But yeah. the, Sí, Question, sí, what is the alternative to create the perception? I think just copy. Just uh -huh. copy a business idea. This, this. Es como copiar la idea de la, del negocio. Uh -huh. Business idea. Hello? Did you finish? Sure. Uh, almost done. Okay, okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, in this slide. Yes, a better plan. Is to pick a different perception when that you bring is the first, yeah. All right. Into your prospect, man. Yeah. Yeah. estaba perdido, entonces. Wow. No problem. <laughs> A better, no, no está para después, si no pregunta, ya sabe. A better plan is to... The number four. The number four. What will have happening is really hasting to open and run a video story, story internal in its cervix. Mm -hmm. uh, Blockbuster, right? Yes. Uh, at the time, Netflix launched the perception of Blockbuster. Oh, yeah. Was firmly established in the mean. Hey. Hello, teacher. I'm back. Hello, great. I see you now. Yay. Vaya. Tratando de que no quede lo que hemos anotado para que no touch. I believe that is indeed. Ah, ya vi la oración. Here, part of it. Uh -huh. It gets more that our attention. This one. Yeah, lo yes. Pero, if you want, free, 
We can read another. We can read again. <laughs> okay. Let's see, let's see. Um, solo quiero ver para no dejarlo eh, ahí para que empecemos okay. ah, pero vuelve a estar en mute uh, sorry, sorry no está tan tan cortita, vaya, esperaba una conversación hello, how are you no <risa> It's, not... <laughs> It's a paragraph. Mm. Okay. Uh, start me and Shane's. Then Wilbur. Uh -huh, okay. About um, 40 years ago, marketing strategies, all right, and Jack True <laughs> offered <laughs> the world a way to think about making a brand memorable. The best way to be remembered is to be first into your perspective mind, representing a clear perception. Perception. Next. Yeah. Wilbur. Lee tú el segundo para que le toque el largo a Wilbur. Oh, okay, okay. Me, me, me. <laughs> Think about all the brands that have become synonymous with their functions. Got scotch tape, Kleenex, Xerox. Uh, it's no accident. They were also the first. Okay, continue, Wilbur. <laughs> okay, this is a reverence. I can see uh, people love to know what is new. We can't help ourselves. Marketers know this, this too. If a product gets our attention, and if it's really is new, it gets more than our attention. It gets remem remembered. Okay. It is easier to go to just a. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Uh, okay. It is easier to just copy a a business idea political position or organizational mission from someone else. But if someone else already has has gone got it got 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 in, into your prospect's mind with the same perception you had hoped to create you'll find it is hard to push to push the down. A better plan is to pick a different perception. One that you can be the first to put into your prospect's mind. Ya me dio sed otra vez. <laughs> Anna, continue. Okay. okay. <laughs> Netflix. Sigo. Ah, va. No, Anna. ¿Quieres continuar? Okay. No, no, dale, dale, dale. <laughs> Netflix could have never made my made. Made. Made it yeah. if Phil Hasting idea had been to open a bunch, bunch, bunch. Of, bunch. Bunch, bunch of a store to compete with Blockbuster. At the time Netflix launched, the perception of Blockbuster was firmly established in the, in the minds of most prospects as the go to place to find. Movies, Netflix, side step, side step. That problem by creating a perception of itself as the go to place to find movies online that was new. Well, I have a couple of questions. What is the meaning of uh, side, side step? Somebody, somebody knows. Uh, it's, 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 it's like to. No, it's like to for the context. As, as like to uh, avoid. I don't know. 
avoid no, uh, like to evitar eh... ay no cómo se llama la otra palabra eh... Uy, como, like como cuando, cuando, cuando ajá esa pero hay una palabra uh... ay no no me acuerdo <risa> pero hay una palabra no, que, que como cuando step. te tiran algo y vos uy así ¿eh? Pero... Eh, teacher said say move one Ay, se quitó ese. Said one, eh, move, move one, one step, step to a different side ah. el famoso me agacho revira contra algo así esquivar esquivar eso <risa> <Puchica. Yes. risa> Uh, Pienso ya yeah. hey, oh. en Spanish. En oh, Spanish, oh. but is correct. Sorry. Esquivar o, o eludir. Sí. Ah, eludir. And bunch. Es a bunch. The teacher said the bunch is uh, like, yes, a, like a bunch. Uh, a lot of stores. I similar a lot of yes okay okay <clears throat> bunch a group of un montón de okay un montón I get it no oh, sí a group of oh, a very montón <laughs> <laughs> a very bunch <laughs> Okay. okay. The there is what is the better alternative to creating the perception of an all of ready. Uh -huh. We will have uh, ah eh, another. So we cannot think of now. You not have seven at sal. Three or two. For example, this is a different. Because it's really the Black Friday in the Sales. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I, I, I really like the Black awesome. Friday. <laughs> I attention for me and Sales. Okay, very good, husband. Okay. Good job. <laughs> Okay, people, so the first question, who, who offered this concept of um, like being the first, right? This is a bottle, right? This is a bottle. Um, and the question says, memorable, memorable branding, memorable branding. Who offered the concept of memorable branding? Mm -hmm. What is your answer? Memorable, 
Arise a truth word. Arise a truth and a truth. Okay, yes, and they did it in a book, right? In a book they wrote. They are authors. They are authors, they are marketers. So they introduced the well, a lot of other concepts, concepts, but this memorable brand, it's from them, original from them. Okay. Mm. Next question, what are some brands that have become synonymous with their function? And let's add three more. Hmm. In the excerpt, we found, uh -huh, which ones? Three of them. Dodge, Kleenex, Zero. Uh -huh. Is there any other brand that comes to your mind? Maybe iPhone, maybe. Okay, yeah, iPhone. Coca Cola. Thanks, mm -hmm. All right. But this is okay. The idea here uh, is that they become synonymous to the function. For example, vaya, este es un producto que es de las mujeres, ¿verdad? Entonces, todo el mundo conoce la marca, por ejemplo, Cotex, como todas, right? Not exactly just the brand. Kleenex, todos los Kleenex, no importa la marca que sean, los llamamos Kleenex, aunque es un papel para limpiarse, right? Entonces, estas marcas que han, se han vuelto el nombre del producto, uh, y sin importar, ¿verdad?, quién lo produzca, eh, esa es la idea acá. El reconocimiento de la marca de tal forma que Siendo el primero en el negocio o siendo el primero con el concepto, siendo el primero con eh, el ofrecimiento del producto, qué sé yo, su idea fue la primera probablemente. Probablemente en el mercado fue el primer producto que existió, ¿verdad? Por eso se llama así ahora. Si usted pide eh, eh, adhesive tape, you are not going to ask for a day said right you are you are going to ask for hey pasame el scotch verdad no decimos hey pasame la cinta adhesiva transparente <laughs> para que no decimos así decimos hey no. dame el scotch <laughs> el tape el tape yeah. va mm -hmm. okay uh, en Guatemala hay un eh, que su nombre es en inglés masking tape de cinta de, mas, de enmascarar, ¿verdad? Al tirro no lo conocen como tirro, lo conocen como masking tape, con el nombre con que se los describieron primero, ¿verdad? Masking tape, cinta de enmascarar. Para nosotros es tirro. Es cuando yo decía, hey, pásenme el tirro, entonces digo, eh, sí. <ríe> y allá es el masking, ¿verdad? Y para mí, salvadoreña, no era el masking, era el masking. <ríe> Yeah, got it. Okay, but masking tape is in English, right? Masking tape is the white masking tape, right? Or the yellow one. Um, okay, algo así es lo que tenemos que pensar para dar esos ejemplos. Vamos a ver. Pampers. Okay, Pampers. We Gillette. have the mark or the brand Pampers. Uh huh. Gillette. Gillette, good. Uh huh. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. Pupusas. <laughs> okay, yes. well, pupusas. <laughs> yeah, Salvador. Yeah, sí, porque no decimos dame una tortilla rellena de queso con frijoles, ¿verdad? No decimos así, decimos una pupusa, pero es porque el nombre que le pusimos, ¿verdad? Pero no existe una marca que se llame pupusas, ¿verdad? <laughs> That's a good idea. Okay, yeah. I was, uh -huh. I was working um, in a... Nintendo. In a I was Nintendo, working in yes. A, Tell me whether I was working in a place where uh, we get we arrived uh, late, and we found a girl who was making tortilla, and we asked her, "Sorry, uh, do you have do, do uh, are you do you have pupusas?" And she said, "No, uh, because it is late." 
Eh, I have a toy help, uh, but you can give me a, a tortilla and, and you can add some add and cheese inside, <laughs> please. And while she was making the tortilla, she is, huh? <laughs> It was it was funny in yeah. my company we were laughing out. You got that well, but oh poor girl. Yeah, she didn't know who was asking, huh? Okay, all right. Yeah. Uh there are some products that become the name of the product. They are synonymous, right? When you say the word Ferox, you know that it is about photocopies and all those kind of things, right? Uh, for example, eh, 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 existe la marca Bayer, ¿verdad? Era excess. Pero si nosotros pensamos, hey, mira, y hay un montón de cucas en mi casa, right? There are a lot of cockroaches in my house. What do we offer? What, what do we recommend? By all. Yeah, everybody says by gone, right? Even if it is going to be right, the one that you buy, you say just by gone, yeah, by gone. And you know that by gone is a venom for cockroaches, right? It doesn't matter if it is right or whatever. Um, yeah, there are a lot of a lot of brands like uh, the one we were saying, right? But um, there was. Hola, hola. Uh huh. Hello, Nelson? No, Hi. no, sorry. <laughs> okay, no problem. No problem. I think he is in a, in a call, right? All right. So let's continue then with the next question. The next question is, what is a very alternative to creating the perception of an already existing product? What is a better alternative to creating the perception of an already existing product mm -hmm. according to the reading uh, maybe just copy a business political position or organizational mission mm -hmm. from someone else Mm -hmm. Maybe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not convinced, teacher. <laughs> and, yeah, because uh, they are saying that we can create something new and we are, as customers, aware of what is and the new trend, for example. And if you copy, if you copy, as they said over here, Maybe you were going to sell the product, but not in what you expect, the amount that you expect. And it says, after the a statement, it says, if a product gets our attention and it really is new, it gets more than our attention, it gets remembered, right? Then it says, it is easier to copy a business idea, like political position, organizational mission from someone else. but right? But, mm -hmm. entonces, no es tan buena idea, right? But if someone else already has gotten into your perfect mind with the same perception you had hoped to create, then you'll find it is hard to push them out. Va a ser un poco más difícil sacarlos de ese pensamiento y poner mi marca en vez de decir scotch que digan, qué sé yo, Carmen State, ¿verdad? No, no, no. No va a entrar eso ahí. Porque ya no es nuevo. It's not new. Exactly, it is not. A better plan is to pick a different perception. Ajá. Esto sí ya tiene un poquito de más eh, sentido, ¿verdad? Eso de copiarlo tal vez no va a ser buena idea. It's not going to be the best idea. The be a better idea will be to pick a different perception, one that you can be the first to put into your prospect's mind. Por ejemplo, lo que hizo Gorilla, ¿verdad? Eh, eh, las, eh, las, pega, las pegamentos, ¿verdad? De, eh, ellos crearon 
sus propios eh, adhesivos, ¿verdad? Pero con un sentido más fuerte. Le pusieron gorila. ¿Qué es un gorila? ¿De qué, qué nos representa el gorila? Strengths, right? Strengths es algo mucho más fuerte que un scotch, que una cinta adhesiva, right? So it's a new concept, right? They pick a better idea. Uh, do you agree? Do you agree now or do you have any other idea? I think I agree with you. Okay, All right. Okay, then. Uh, this is reading comprehension, guys. This is just reading comprehension. So, according to the reading, what would have happened if Reed Hastings had opened rent a video stores instead of innovating the service? What would have happened? What would have happened? ¿Qué hubiera sucedido? What would have happened? Go to the reading. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey. They wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yes. Sure, and sure, uh, would exist another company with the same idea. Yeah, someone else could have the same idea that occurs to this guy, and he just. Step, um, I'm sorry, sidestepped the problem. The problem was not exactly a problem. It was that there was an obstacle, right? Obstacle to succeed, but actually he didn't care. And he went for a different idea, went for a different idea and it uh, was successful, right? It was successful. All right, and the number, Five. What did Netflix do differently? What did Netflix do differently? Netflix side this side this that problem by creating a perception of the of the if so, as the go to place okay. to rent the movies online. That's what's yeah. new. Exactly. So the idea of renting movies was given by Blockbuster, right? They were that um it was their dominion, right? Uh, the rental video store. But the idea of renting a movie was so common, it was popular, everyone accepted the idea of that business, right? But then an idea came up. And what was the idea? To offer this in a more, more available way, right? Online, yeah, online. It was what they did differently. They offer the same business, right? Renting movies, but they offered or they went for a new strategy going online, right? Okay, people. So the topic for today, the topic for today is how to avoid double negatives. Okay, how to avoid double negatives. The double negatives are these sentences that sometimes express, uh, let's say a mistaken idea because it has two negations, two words 
that negate, okay? So they are doing the function of saying no, right? And there are a lot of words that say no. It's not only no, but not, right? No, not, any, never, anyone, nobody. So those are negative sense, right? It gives you the idea of negation, okay? Not negativity, negation, okay? Negation. So we are going to see that there is a way to avoid the two negatives or the double negatives. There are some authors that say that using double negatives is incorrect. Other authors said that in some cases, double negatives are necessary. And yes, okay, why? Because if you say two negatives, then you are going to say something affirmative. Let's say this in detail, okay? So the topic today is how to avoid double negative. Okay, how to avoid double negative. This is your class number 24. The objective of studying this um, is in the context of effective and ineffective ways to increase brand awareness. And here we're going to see some expressions that maybe are going to use the double negative and we are going to transform them into a correct or more standardized form in English, okay? This is about the standard English, standard English, grammatically correct English, accepted English, educated English, okay? So uh, we started already this, uh, where vocabulary related to effectiveness and, and effectiveness, ways to build brand awareness. We're going to see it right now. And then we are going to talk about the double negative grammar. Uh, we have some written exercises that maybe we're going to do some today and some tomorrow, okay? And well, let's start then under this discussion. Bien, en la plataforma, ahorita pueden entrar todos a la plataforma y se van a la eh, videoconferencia número 24, video conference number 24. And you are going to answer these two questions. So let's talk about, and at the same time that we are talking, you type in your answers, okay? So let's talk about what is the best way to get customers' attention towards your product? What is the best way to get customers' attention towards your product? A ver, en este caso, quisiera escuchar algunas opiniones de ustedes, okay? De la primera pregunta. Please, I would like to listen to you uh, giving some opinions about these statements. The best way to get customers' attention about our product, right? Wilber? Uh, I think the the first step is uh, uh, I'm I'm not sure, but it could be the uh, to be near uh, to the client and and have a, a service customer uh, face to face and a show customer other service. Yes, and show the product uh, present. 
Well, it depends on uh, the service or product, no? Yeah, all but right. It is uh, an idea. Okay. So you have to show your product to the customer through a customer service uh, area. Is that correct? Yes. All right. What do you think about it, Ana Lorena? Uh, maybe if if it's possible, uh, give a sample or um, give information about the good quality and the better feature about the product. Okay, great. Uh, what do you think, Carlos Ernesto? Yeah, repeat, please, the question. Uh -huh. What is the best way to get customers' attention towards your product? Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. I don't know what to say for me. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, think about a product you use. Why do you use that product? Did you listen to advertisement or did you read? I'm sorry, did you read a newspaper advertisement? How did you, I mean, how did they get your attention uh, to buy, to, to go and change your mind and say, I'm going mm -hmm. to buy this product and I decided for this product? Mm, uh, maybe the color the product okay the color of the product all right mm -hmm. mostly if it is something uh um edible edible is that that uh, just one something to eat right something to eat uh, allow me to check for this word because it is very interesting okay Um, other uh, other can can be uh, yeah. for for the product for okay the form all right mm -hmm. uh, or price mm -hmm. okay the price how you get the customer's attention. Towards your product, as your offer, product. Offer. 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 Okay. Functional. Functionality. Okay, with the attributes. Uh huh. Very good. Now let's go to the next question because the next question tells us about ineffective and effective ways. So, how would you define ineffective, and how would you define effective ways to increase awareness? How would you define ineffective, guys? Ineffective, what is that? What is an ineffective way? What is an effective way? Ya encontré la palabra, I found the word. The word is edible, okay, edible. I will write it down right here. Para todo lo que comemos. Okay, it's like this. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe it's the utility, the product. Uh... Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, and not only that, I think that the value of the product, right? The value of the product. Uh, what is this product for? And what's the need that, that, it, that this product is going to fulfill? So, but... How am I going to get the attention? How am I going to get the attention? Uh, well, actually, I'm going to present 
my product as the best one, right? I'm going to compare it with maybe another one, maybe an, a competitor that is not fulfilling the need, okay? So I show um, how this product can be part of your life. And I need to make you feel identified with my product, okay? So what will be an effective or what will be an ineffective way to increase the awareness? What do you think, Elias? Number two. Salvador, what do you think about the question number two? Kevin? Okay, Salvador, please go ahead. I think um, effective way to increase awareness is by TV, social media, Very good, Salvador, yes. As Carlos was saying, he was trying to say, I think a uh, functionality, yeah, the, um, if it functions, right? If it functions, for example, if my product or my, no, 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 my product, uh, my message work, right? If my message is working, if my message is effective, effective means that I, make people know or make people aware of my product, right? Of my product. So yes, that's correct. And I made just a little list, okay? According to some authors, some marketers, they say that the best way to get customers' attention is to create a strategies. Like, first of all, do the research, right? And you have to identify your target spot pain points. Then you have to focus on what makes you unique. What's the difference between you and your competitors, between you and your product and your and the products of your competitors. And then make your target feel something. Make your target feel something. So they have to feel what I feel or feel just a little part of their uh, need fulfilled. And at the same time, this move the behavior or change the behavior and make them identified with the product, okay? Then embrace the power of video. Yes, of course, all the resources, image, sound, and movement, right? Video. Uh, you can create maybe advertisements for social media, not necessarily a paid, um, paid advertisement, right? Maybe you can just create a video or take uh, videos and put them together. Uh, of people using my product or, or of people satisfied with my product, like those informa inf um, infomercials, infomercials, all right? Infomercials. They express time after time uh, what are the benefits of that product, right? And why they decided and what were the benefits they received. Um, so we could say, uh, infomercials. Infomercials are uh, these commercials that give you all the instructions how to use the product and uh, what are the benefits of using my product, the prices of my product, and how do they work? Um, how do they work? compared to the competitors, right? Make your written content is to scan. Make your written content easy to scan, easy to read, okay? Easy to read and take what is 
more important for me as a customer. Maybe what is important for me is not important for Salvador, right? Maybe something is important for Salvador and not for Carlos Ernesto. So you have to uh, make your written content easy to scan to get what the customer really wants to know. Uh, then you have to respect your audience valuable time. You have to do it shorter, concise, right? You have to uh, do or send concise messages. Mm, not only short, but consistent, right? Know your audience. Are they young? What ages are they uh, between? Maybe they are teenagers, maybe they are kids, maybe they are elder people. So know your audience, what are their preferences? So you, get, you have to take advantage of their characteristics, the demographic characteristics, the emotions that make them function, make them buy, okay? Work on your brand identity. So you have to look brand of awareness, brand awareness. But the brand identity is usually to tell people who I am, who, uh, what I do, where do I do it, how do I do it, who with, right? Or what's the people interested in my business? So I show examples, right? And then the ineffective and effective. Well, ineffective, we think something that it is not capable, right? Maybe something that is not efficient. Yeah. Mm, something that doesn't perform as we expect. Okay. Then what about an effective way? Well, an effective way will be one that is successful. Then what produces what we really expect, right? So Let's see, well, the brand awareness built brand equity. Okay, brand equity, brand values, right? Um, it makes my brand bright, okay, bright. And everybody's going to know and everybody's going to mention my name, right? As we said, being the first or with a new idea or taking just one piece, one position, uh, one piece of the mind of the customer, it will make the difference. It will make the difference. So be a person, not a company. Think how people think. Don't think as an object. Don't think about your product as uh, just something else. Think about a person. Think like a person and be a person, not just a company, not just a product, right? Something more. Give the added value to people in speaking, in messages. Socialize. You have to involve with the community, right? To tell a narrative, the experiences of people with my product, using them, wearing them, and recommending, right? Make sharing easy. Make sharing easy. So just with one click, everybody knows. Right? With one click, everybody knows. You see here, it spreads all over, but just my message, okay? Well, talking about the double negative. Double negative is when you use two negative words in a sentence. This is when you use two negative words in a sentence. Um, negative words. Let's mention some negative words. What negative words come to your mind when we say negative? Well, I could say worse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like this. Like, like this. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. But something that says no, never. Okay. Uh, we could also say don't. Okay. Another way to say no, right? Another way to say no for the third person doesn't. Yeah. And all the auxiliaries, uh, auxiliaries um, that make the verb negative, that uh, transform into negative, the action, right? Mm. Also, we, can, we could say no, 
note. Um, no, not. Mm, we could say uh, that some prefix, uh, prefix, prefix, like on, uh, um, prefix like on, eh, in, etc. I'm going to Okay. Then we have other words like any, okay, any body, nobody, mm -hmm. anyone, no one, mm -hmm. no one. Here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, double negative. Mm -hmm. Is I think is affirmative. Yes, it becomes affirmative in some cases. Exactly. Exactly. So let's give some examples right here. For example, I don't uh let's I don't eat y voy a ponerlo así. I don't eat no breakfast. Is this correct? No, mm -hmm. it's not. It is not, right? Aha. Uh -huh. What is the way to say it? I don't eat breakfast. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will say I don't, oh, vamos a poner el didn't, okay? Didn't eat nothing for breakfast. Nothing is another word right here. Okay, nothing for breakfast. I didn't eat nothing. Mm, no, this is not correct, okay? What is correct is, because I have two negatives, nothing is negative, didn't is negative because it did not. So I have to eliminate one of these negatives and, uh, uh, and say a, an affirmative word, okay? Affirmative will be like anybody, okay? Anyone, affirmative is, Mm, any or anything, okay? I'm gonna put it lucky. Anything, okay? Entonces, vamos a ir haciendo las diferencias. I didn't eat anything for breakfast. Esto sería lo correcto, okay? This will be the correct. Ahora ya tengo, el negativo era nothing. Aquí así ya se convierte en un afirmativo, anything, ¿ok? Anything, cualquier cosa, ¿sí? Pero aquí no está actuando como cualquier cosa. Aquí está actuando como ninguna cosa, ¿ok? Como ninguna cosa. Entonces, um, podría yo decir también, I ate nothing, ok, convirtiendo el didn't en afirmativo, ¿sí? I ate nothing for breakfast. Ahora, ¿cómo sería el sentido si yo pongo I Rocky ate no. anything? Rocky no. I'm sorry. Ok. Ajá. ¿Cómo sería el sentido si yo digo I ate anything? Así. Ya no tiene el mismo sentido de, de ninguno, ¿verdad? Tiene el sentido de cualquier cosa, ¿sí? Ok. Entonces, esta no, no nos dice que no. Okay. Esta no nos dice que no. Nos dice que sí, ¿verdad? Que comió cualquier cosa. Ok. No nos funciona acá. ¿Ya? Yeah. La que nos funciona es esta. I ate nothing. I ate nothing. Un solo negativo, ya sea en el verbo o ya sea en estas palabras que 
se refieren a no, a nada, a ninguna expresión que, que dice que cero cosas, ¿verdad? Cero personas. ¿Ya? Yeah. Entonces, eso es negative. Vale. Vamos a ir arreglando un poco esta lista. Vale. Vamos a ver. Déjenme seleccionar. Ok. When we say never, the affirmative will be ever, right? Don't, the affirmative is the verb per se or do, right? Do, lo voy a poner entre paréntesis porque eh, sería como el verbo en sí o la acción, ¿verdad? Ok. El doesn't igual, sería el does o, o en sí el verbo, ¿verdad? A ver, mm, no... El afirmativo es yes, ¿verdad? Así que no, no, no va, o sin nada de nada, es yes, ¿sí? Y no, también el contrario, el opposite es yes. Hmm. En estos, solo quitamos el prefijo de la palabra y ya se convierte en un afirmativo. Ejemplo, ejemplo sería como el que acabamos de ver. A ver, como este. Effective and ineffective, right? Affirmative and negative, right? Ineffective. You got it? Okay. Let's go back here. Here we are. Then, uh, the... Okay. Uh, the negative of any will be no or uh, not. Or not. Nothing también puede entrar ahí. Okay. Para anything también. No, not, and nothing. Okay. Para anybody. Somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody. Eh, anybody. And somebody sería para nobody. Okay. Este sería el negativo de estos dos. Estos dos son... Uh, en lo positivo, en lo afirmativo. Anything es en lo afirmativo, digamos. ¿Ok? Y en pregunta también. Eh, vamos a ver. Eh, nobody sería para anybody, para sustituir también somebody. Anyone. Anyone es el que va a sustituir en un doble negativo al no one. ¿Ok? Al no one. Entonces, para el nothing ya sabemos. Puede ser anything. Puede ser anybody, eh, puede ser cualquier otra cosa que se refiera a objeto, ¿verdad? A objeto. Mm, en el momento vamos a ver en los ejemplos para que lo veamos más eh, gráfico, ¿sí? Más gráfico el asunto. Sometimes you will hear you would hear people uh, expressing double negatives, okay, double negatives. They said, they say, um, some authors, that this is incorrect. But actually, it has a different meaning, okay? That is the problem, that we are not clear. Maybe sometimes we're going to get a confusion if we don't use this correctly, okay? So uh, allow me to take you to the grammar box, okay? We have a grammar box right here. So in this grammar focus, you will see how to avoid, okay? How to avoid, it's not how not to use, it's how to avoid, all right? How to avoid. And so it means that some time or one of the times you will see that you have to use double negatives, but the meaning will be a different thing. All right, so look at the examples in the box. Then complete the exercises below. Two negatives in a sentence are considered ungrammatical in English. Ungrammatical means not standardized in English, okay? 
My recommendation is to avoid using them since the result is that the statement like, I don't know nothing, could be interpreted differently as I do know something, okay? This is when you think that if I say, eh, en español nosotros sí decimos yo no sé nada, ¿verdad? Y es correcto. En otros idiomas también podemos encontrar que vamos a escuchar los dos negativos y está reafirmando la negación, ¿verdad? But in English, it's not eh, grammatically correct, okay? Grammatically correct. Maybe in spoken English, you will hear a lot of expressions with double negative. Please don't get confused, okay? Don't get confused. We need to learn the standard English that it is accepted in our workplaces, for example, in an educated level or in an ambience where formal language is required, okay? So uh, this is when we are going to use um, avoiding the negatives, right? We are going to use the grammar, avoiding the double negative. So for example, if I say, I don't know nothing, it's as if I say that I really know something, okay? Uh, let's see this. Uh, two expressions and let's contrast them. It says, we don't publish nothing unrelated to the benefits of our products. Okay, we can't use two negative words. We need one that it is affirmative. And we can say this differently too. We don't publish anything unrelated to the benefits of our products. Pero también podemos hacer una más, okay? Eh, podri, podríamos ponerlo como eh, quitando el don't, ¿ok? Y dejando el nothing, ¿ok? Así que sería, vuelvo y repito, esto es al estilo del hablante. Pero en ese estilo del hablante, usted considérese en qué estilo quiere estar, ¿verdad? Si en el, el estilo... Si en el estilo estándar, educado, polite, formal, ¿verdad? Eh, donde lo aceptable es eh, decirlo de una manera correcta, ¿verdad? Entonces usted va a usar este. Pero si su estilo es, eh, me gusta más el de la calle, me gusta más el... Eh, no es que esté incorrecto el, la otra manera, porque no es que está incorrecto. Algunos dicen que suena mal, sí, pero es que gramaticalmente no está correcto, ¿ok? Gramaticalmente no está correcto, sin embargo, en el inglés hablado se usa, ¿ok? Entonces, vamos a ver acá este otro ejemplo. The company didn't get no additional sales after the event. The company didn't get any, any additional. Cambiamos el no por el any, ¿verdad? Sales after the event. Vamos a ver. The experts... Never said nothing. Mm, no, this is not correct because never is negative. Nothing is negative. We could change this saying, never said anything. Okay, never said anything. We need to avoid double negative stating an affirmative one. Okay, one negative and one affirmative. So about the drastic change of the image in our products. Okay. Puede cambiarse cualquiera de los dos. Puede cambiarse el nothing, el, el segundo negativo, o puede cambiarse el primer negativo. ¿Cómo quedaría con el primer negativo cambiado? Así rapidito. Vamos a hacerlo. Okay. Sería, we publish nothing. Okay. We publish nothing. Okay. We publish nothing unrelated, etc. Bien, de ahí tenemos el siguiente. Let's look at the next one. The company didn't get any additional. Okay, cambiemos el primero, el didn't. Ajá, uh -huh. the company. ¿Cómo sería ahí? Si quitamos el didn't y lo hacemos afirmativo, el didn't get. ¿Cómo sería el pasado de get? Got. Yes, the company got 
got. Uh -huh. Cambiamos el any, ¿verdad? Lo dejamos como el no. Uh -huh. Got no additional sales after the event. ¿Ok? Y así sucesivamente podemos hacerlo. Tanto así como así. Hay diferentes formas, ¿ok? Ahorita son las 9 and 59, ¿ok? <laughs> Spanglish, no, no Spanglish. It's 9.59 already, so uh, I just want to show you how to avoid this ones, okay? How to avoid this ones. And let's read number one. The department doesn't know nothing about branding. ¿Cómo quedaría esa primera si eliminamos un negativo? Eliminamos nothing, okay? Y lo convertimos con anything. ¿Cómo quedaría? A ver, todos. The department doesn't know some, some, uh, any, any, anything. Anything. Ajá, anything. porque es negativa la, la exacto. Ajá. Anything about branding. Ok. Ahí está. Then the second one, it says, the manager never tell us nothing about the plans to improve the brand of the business. Uh -huh. The manager the, tenemos dos negativos, never and nothing. Uh, the manager ever mm -hmm. the manager ever tells, tells nothing about Nothing about the plans to, to improve the brand of the business. Ok. En este caso, para no perdernos, ok. Para no perdernos y empezar a manejarlo, vamos a cambiar únicamente el nothing, el no, ok, como acá, ¿verdad? El, na, el any, ah, perdón, el no por el any. Y el nothing for anything. Vamos a comenzar por ahí para que vayamos avanzando y lo vayam, nos vayamos acostumbrando. Luego vamos a ir viendo que eh, esto es sumamente fácil, ¿ok? Esto es sumamente fácil, no hacer dos negativos en una oración. En español, nosotros, eh, digamos, a los que hablamos español, nos cuesta un poquito el concepto. Nos cuesta un, un poquito el concepto al principio. Pero luego tomamos eh, la práctica y van a ver que después se nos hace como, eh, como, como inaceptable, ¿verdad? Que alguien diga dos negativos. Pero en español es acceptable, all right? It's acceptable. And that is why this is going to be our topic tomorrow too, okay? This is going to be our topic tomorrow and we will finish tomorrow, okay? We will finish tomorrow. Vamos a hacer mañana eh, el último tema de loyalty, ¿verdad? Loyalty programs. Tenemos una lectura para el día de mañana. Pero lo más importante es que no falten a la clase. ¿Por qué? A ver, ¿quién recuerda por qué no debemos faltar? Hay que hacer el Hay pupusa. Survey. Survey. Okay. Survey. Hay pupusa. Ok, ya. Yeah. Satisfaction survey. Y acordémonos que la satisfaction survey es uno de los requisitos al final de el curso para darles el pase, ¿verdad? Para seguir con nosotros. Entonces, eh, is there any question so far? ¿Hay alguna pregunta ahorita? Um, I have a question, but is the homework for is about the home the homework. Okay, which one? Uh, tengo una una pregunta que la en el midterm aparece, uh -huh. pero en la tarea 1.5 me la pone mal y, y ya probé muchas variantes y, y en el midterm, midterm. Uh -huh. Okay, just one second. 
Yo creo que es la misma de great, ¿verdad? Si eh, no me equivoco. Es, es de la de la tercera, la tercera tarea de la unidad 1. Eh, pide que ordenemos las palabras para crear una sentencia. Eh, sería many distributors will will rather much sell or product at a lower price. Lo voy a presentar mejor. Ok. La número cinco, number five, right? Ah, number two. Mm -hmm. Ok, entonces, esto me aparece bien en, en el midterm. Mm -hmm. eh, many distributors will rather match sell or product at a lower price. Mm -hmm. Pero One no second. me aparece bien. Many distributors will much rather sell our product at a lower price. Bueno, yo la tengo exactamente igual. Many distributors would rather. Y de ahí, ¿en, en dónde no le sale bien, me dice? En el midterm. Aquí no me sale bien. Aquí no me sale bien en la tarea, pero en el midterm aparece... Incluso la copié y pegué de midterm porque pensé que tenía algo ahí que no, que, que me lo marcaba como malo y, y nada. En midterm creo que es, no me acuerdo si es la 1. Vaya, aquí está igual y aquí sí me la da por válida. Many distributors will rather much sell our product at a lower price. Y aquí sí tiene el chequecito verde. Vamos a ver en el otro de regreso, discúlpenme. Vamos allá al otro. Okay. Es que yo lo tengo exactamente así como usted lo tiene. Y a ver, many distributors. Póngase ahí de regreso para ver cómo lo puso. Quite la linecita de encima para que lo podamos verificar. Puede ser algún. ¿Alguien mira alguna situación con este? Con esta respuesta. Casi todos, y de hecho, usted creo que lo estuvo resolviendo con Miguel en su momento. Inclusive a, a mí Miguel me ayudó. Y solo fue de copy page. Casi lo quiso eh, Rafael ahorita. A ver, vamos a ver de regreso. Pero no hay ningún apóstrofe, no hay ninguna otra cosa más que... A ver, déjenme ver, porque... Eh, tiene el punto ver, al final de la oración. ¿Hola? Yo creo que tiene el punto, ¿verdad? Eh, no sí, se lo, quité, se lo quité para que saliera el, el mensaje, el, la oración completa, porque si le pongo el punto, desaparece. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. Y con el punto me da eso. Me da, me da error. También ya le quité el punto. Me da error. También ya le cambié la mayúscula por minúscula. Y siempre me da error. No, yo creo que... A ver, quiero ver, a ver si... Para ver cómo me sale aquí. Osma me mandó algo, lo voy a copiar y pegar. 
es would much rather y no would rather much. En eso estaba yo pensando, pero yo lo tengo así. Would. Ya. Yeah. Uh -huh. No lo moví. Ok, yeah, would much rather. Yes, of course. Would much rather. Ah, ah era swap. Yes. Está, ajá, o sea que ahí le hubieran puesto una pleca, ¿verdad? Para que no quedara en, en que era una sola. Okay. Ah, ok. Ok, hey, excellent. Thank you, guys. Thank you, teacher. Ok, all right. No problem. Thank you very much, Hosman. Y a veces uno está leyendo, está viendo y, y es como que no esté leyendo, no está viendo. ¿no? Bien. Uh, is there any other question? It's okay, teacher. Okay, people, please do your homework, submit all your tests, and see you tomorrow. Okay. Have a very good see night. You. See you. Bye bye. See you, bye. bye. See you tomorrow. See you. Bye. Lista no pasó, teacher. You're right. No pasé la lista. Hágame favor, pongámosle ahí que todos pongan presente en el WhatsApp. Chicos, por favor, todos pongan presente en el, en el WhatsApp. Ok, teacher. Ok. Good night. Ok, night night. Para Ernesto, Ana Lorena, Boris Alexander, gracias, presente, 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 muy bien. Carlos Alberto, presente. Carlos Ernesto, presente. Edwin Antonio, presente. Elias Natalia, presente. Eulice Torres Torres, presente. Fátima, presente. José Miguel Torres, presente. José Salvador, presente. José Manatilio, presente. Gracias. Thank you, guys. Karen Sánchez. Oh, she was in, in. Kevin Alfredo Lucero Méndez, Nelson Alberto, Rafael Alexander, Santiago, Wilber Alberto. Hi, Santiago. You may have a very good night.